when you do come in for your operation, they come to the main reception desk, let them know your name and one of the ward administrators will come down and take you up to your room. The uh, healthcare assistant normally then comes in, they're wearing green, like a light green, um, and they'll take your blood pressure and normally fit you for some TED stockings just to prevent you from getting any clots in your legs. The nurse then comes in um, and will go through the uh, admission. The nurse go through a lot of paperwork for you. They will tell you what's going to happen from start to finish in terms of the routine uh, for pre and post-op. After the nurse leaves, you might see the pharmacist the pharmacist will go through your medication. I'm really sorry, there's going to be a lot of rep repetition because the pharmacist will check your medication again, the nurse would have checked your medication, so they will, it's just for safety precaution to make sure that we capture everything. The anaesthetist will discuss what type of anaesthetic that you haven't done as well. Sometimes it is a full general anaesthetic, you put to sleep, other times for some of the hip and knee replacements you will have what we call a spinal anaesthetic and they always give you sedation drugs so you are very relaxed. And then other people have local anaesthetics but the anaesthetist will discuss that and decide between you both which is best for you. After the anaesthetist, the, the consultant will also come in. Uh, they will go through the procedure, so you need to ask any questions if you still have any. If not, then you're happy to go through the procedure, you sign a consent form. The theatre list normally um, will be sent to us a few days beforehand. Uh, the nurses will print it out in the morning and it will have a list of how many patients are on and who's number one, two, three, four, five, etc. Normally what tends to happen is in, uh, day cases will go first, inpatients will go after the day cases. But things do change. Sometimes it, um, the consultant will come down and think, OK, well, that procedure might be a bit quicker, that one's a little bit more uh, difficult, so they will change things on the day and that is one thing that does happen quite often if I'm honest so if pre-assessment are saying uh, you might be going down at 11 o'clock or you might be first on the list try not take that as gospel because sometimes things can change in the morning So a catering member of staff will come in and they'll talk to you about what food you want. There is a menu that we can offer, uh, normally light bites for after your procedure, but normally it would be a sandwich. The reason why we say light snack is just because you've had a, you know, most, if you've had a general anaesthetic, you tend to feel sick. You might feel okay before attempting to eat that, but if you're eating a big meal, especially a cooked meal, immediately after anaesthetic, even if you're not feeling sick, once you've eaten it, most patients vomit. That is the most important thing to remember. That's why we always say it's better to just try your stomach by t attempting a small snack. And then after that, if you feel okay, by all means, please order a meal. Pain needs to be managed and I always stress to any patient, you're not being a burden. If you are in pain, you must press your buzzer. That's what we're here for. You're not causing us any problems and we're here to relieve your pain. Your length of stay in hospital depends on the operation, your mobility, your home situation and just how quickly you do recover. The best place is home for you if we know that you're going to be fit and well. We'll keep you in as long as you medically need to be and then the physios, the nurses and the consultant will all make a plan together but we'll get you home as soon as possible because that is your best place. The consultant will always try and see you after the surgery, however the time 
sometimes it's not very convenient to you so we then discuss whether you want to wait for the surgeon the consultant or you want you are happy to go without seeing your surgeon but this will be discussed by with your nurse because they are already operating for them to disturb their flow of things you know they are operating for them to come out of surgery and go back again it's just not safe for the patient so it's easier for them to just continue with the list until they finish then they'll be able to come out When a patient is ready to be discharged, that gets the nurses to start the process of the discharge. Don't take that literally as in, I'm ready to be discharged, I'm ready to go. Sometimes it can take a while. What we wait for is the medications from the pharmacy. And obviously if there's quite a few patients being discharged in that day, it can take a bit of time. We have to give you pain relief to go home with. We have to give you discharge paperwork. So that's a discharge letter, a discharge pack, which has got our numbers to call. It's got a, a list of your medication which costs your GP as well. So there is a pack that you need to be given. So please don't live without that. If the consultant comes in and sees you at seven and say you're okay to go home, it doesn't mean that you can go home immediately. It just means if other things then have to follow. So it might be four to six hours before we let you leave the hospital but we try to be as quick as we can. So the discharge paper would um, have your GP on and the address that the GP is so just always make sure that you're checking that because it can be different on the system. Make sure the nurse goes through it with you so that you're retaining the information. Sometimes if people have got bad memory I normally say to record it on their phone or if they've got a relative there then you can get your relative to speak to you as well and, and ask any questions if needed. If your next of kin can't come in then we're able to telephone your next of kin or anybody who might be able to help and just listen and we'll be able to get the nurse to ring up um, and explain things that way as well. Let other people help you, don't be that person that does everything. It's very difficult if you're independent as well but take a step back. Mobility is really, really important, but I always say let your body do the talking. If you're struggling with pain and you can't do it, don't do it. If you need a day's rest, let have a day of rest and keep taking your painkillers. You're not doing anything wrong by asking others to help you. Mm -hmm.